thank you linda uh, thank you and welcome to all uh, this is yeah yeah, so Akhil is the senior manager for production, sterile production for Brooks Pharma and is an industrial pharmaceutical professional. Um, and he's been in the industry for the last 20 years, um, working in sterile manufacturing. So um, he's also a member of the International Pharma Federation, ISPE, and the Pakistan Pharmacist Association. He has a doctor of pharmacy and master's in uh, business Administration from Pakistan. And um, we hope that uh, this will be the first of uh, more, more sessions to come. And uh, happy to welcome you, Akhil, and uh, like to lend uh, the session over to you. Thank you very much, Linda and ISP team. I welcome uh, to all participants. Uh, Linda gave my introduction, and we just moved to the presentation. The presentation today we are discussing uh, a topic is a parental emulsions, uh, their formulation, the equipment being used for the manufacturing of the parental emulsion and the method how we have to make it or uh, manufacture it. So let's move to the session. So today uh, we will uh, discuss on uh, following topics. So this uh, presentation is distributed in two parts. Uh, one is the introduction or background of the parental emulsions, the clinical use or the area where we are going to use these all the parental emulsions. And second part would be the how uh, to manufacture it uh, in the pharmaceutical industry. In the last, we will uh, conclude this session. And uh, in between there is a poll, uh, some uh, poll questions are there. So in the introduction, uh, we have three methods. Uh, the background of the parental emulsion, basically these are, uh, they have the clinical use of the three. They are the PE as a drug delivery system. Uh, it can carry some any uh, uh, nutrition uh, APIs. And another is the TPN and third is the sustained release or droplets. Uh, the formulation as far as the formulation is concerned, uh, the formulation, the equipment and the methodology. So let's move to the introduction. So as far as the introduction or the background of the parental emulsions are concerned, initially parental emulsions were developed to serve as an intravenous source for both calories and essential fatty acids. Later it involved as a delivery system for the lipophilic substances. These lipophilic substances, now we can uh, uh, mix in the uh, emulsion and we can deliver it to the body. And second, uh, used is a source of energy. Third is the uh, lipid-based drug delivery system. So many uh, recent uh, awareness using lipid-soluble therapeutic agents and lipid emulsion for delivery intravenously has been continuously growing due to biocompatible uh, compatible nature of the lipid-based delivery system. Another use, clinical use, is the suspend release uh, droplet uh, depot uh, preparations are there. So uh, overall, the use of the parental emulsion, there is the uh, lipophilic uh, solubility. Second is the P PTN, parental uh, nutrition. And third is the suspend release. So individually, we will discuss uh, TPN. Uh, as a TPN is the alternate method for the feeding. Uh, where a person having uh, uh, issues, uh, he is very ill, he cannot take the medicine by mouth. So uh, it's recommendation to give him the TPN. Total parental nutrition is a method of feeding uh, that bypass the gastrointestinal tract. A special formula given through the vein provide most of the nutrition to the body. So many uh, materials are there uh, we can give through this route. Uh, it contains proteins, some carbohydrates, uh, electrolytes, vitamins, and some minerals. So this is all about the TPN. TPN uh, is the uh, use as a, a liquid uh, parental emulsions. Another uh, clinical use of the parental emulsion is the as a drug delivery system. So a drug delivery system for a lipophilic substances. So many uh, lipophilic substances are there where, which are very poor, soluble in the water. So we, we cannot dispense them as a solution. So this is the best uh, method for which we can uh, give this formulation. 
advancement in the area of the novel lipid uh, olive oils and fish oils were there uh, have opened a new area uh, for the future clinical application of the lipid based injectable delivery system it may provide a better safety profiles yeah just go down yeah lipid emulsions for iv delivery have been continuously growing now it's a big market for the liquid emulsions now the business is growing due to uh, bio compatible nature of lipid based delivery system uh formulation components and process parameters play a critical role in the success of lipid uh, injectables uh, as a drug delivery vehicle hence need to be well integrated into the formulation of the development strategy when we develop our uh, formulation uh, for the drug delivery system as a pe we should consider uh, which type of the apis we have to use or and which uh, type of the excipients we have to use. so it depends upon the uh, use of these out both things uh this is the uh, list of the medicines or drugs which are parenteral emulsions available worldwide uh, some daisy pumps are there propofol is worldwide available uh, perifluorodeclanes uh, are there and dexamethasone fluorobuprofen acetyl is there vitamin d and C. so many things are available nowadays the market is big for the use of the parenteral emulsions as a drug delivery system uh, some excipients are there they are using uh, basically is oil and uh, water based emulsions so soya bean oils and acetylated monoglycerides are there and so many uh, materials as a excipient we can use it it depends upon the formulation of which formulation and at what uh, route of administration we have to use it iv im or subcutaneously we can use them it depends upon uh, uh, the decision depends upon the route of administration and the dose and the uh, definitely pharmacokinetic of the apis another uh, clinical use uh, is the depot preparations uh, these are uh, basically sustained release so it's a big achievement uh, in the pharmaceutical that we have a sustained release injectables so many uh materials are available in non sterile or in the tablet form or in other things but the sustained release preparations are also available in the injectable forms so another advancement of the parenteral emulsion is the potential to provide a sustained release uh, delay absorption of the total dose from the emulsion can be achieved for drug with a large uh, partition coefficient so here, here is the list uh, which is uh, these uh, materials are available in a uh, finished form long acting insulin preparations are there anti psychotic drugs are there some penicillin vitamins and uh, contraceptives are also there and anti narcotic preparations are available as a sustained release preparations as a uh, injectable form so uh, that was the uh, first part uh, we discussed that uh, what is the clinical use of the parenteral emulsion uh, these were three parenteral uh, Uh, three areas where we can use the parenteral emulsions first was the total parenteral nutritions then second was the nutritional source and the therapeutic uh, agent which is this uh, uh, vehicle can carry uh, and third one was the sustained release uh, now uh, we will uh, go to the uh, manufacturing side or how we have to manufacture this emulsion so before we start this uh, emulsion we have a poll so just to give the answers of the polls so we can understand the what level of the audience is there uh, so this is the poll questions over there and there are total five questions so you will be given at 3 minutes and we will discuss the uh, answers over here and what percentage of persons to give the correct answers so we you have a 3 minutes to answer these five questions and in the last we will uh, check out their results the time is starts now
Can you see the results, Akhil? Yeah, it's very clear. And uh, within a two minutes, the answer is uh, Yeah, OK. So uh, the question one was the uh, suitable global size of parental emulsion. Uh, one to five micron, 47% give the correct answer. It's one to five microns. Good. And uh, second, uh, egg lecithin is an example of a multiplying agent. 94% uh, give the true answer. Uh, egg lecithin is a, uh, really a emulsifying agent. And the uh, third is the droplet uh, gathered than 0.5, uh, greater than 0.5 microns can be trapped in the nuns and cause a pulmonary embolus. Uh, the true, it's okay. 94% uh, again give the good answer. It's true. And that's the uh, fourth is the sustained release. Injectable preparations can be produced by which technique? Penetral lipid emulsions or the suspension? It's true. Eighty-eight percent give the good answer. Uh, it's a correct answer. Good. And the high pressure homogenizer and microfluidizer is the necessary equipment to manufacture emulsion. Eighty-eight percent give the uh, good uh, true answer. So overall, uh, the answers and I come to know the. Uh, audience is uh, very uh, uh, close to my subject and very close to the topic and they have a, a know-how of the topic. It would be a good uh, discussion session today, inshallah. So let's uh, start. It's a good. So emulsions, uh, we start now with how to, what are the emulsions uh, uh, and, uh, in the context of the pharmaceuticals, what are the emulsions, uh, how we have to manufacture it which type of the formulation is required, or what excipients or uh, their vehicles are being used over there, what percentage of the vehicles we have to use, and, and uh, what equipment we have to use, and uh, in the last, uh, the methodology, what would be the order of reaction. So emulsion, just like a just a simple emulsion, and not the parental, the definition of the emulsion would be the, uh, it's a dispersion of the liquid as the globules in another liquid that is immiscible with the first out of two participating liquid in the dispersion system. One is the water and the other is the oil. It's a simple, there is the water uh, molecules are there and the oil droplets are there. We have to mix them. So it's a, a mixture of the dispersion of the liquid globules. So it's a definition of the, the simple uh, emulsion. So now uh, move to the parental emulsions. It's the same, just like emulsion, but here we have to take care of two aspects. One is the sterility and another is the global size. If we officially see the definition, it's a liquid style preparation of drug substance dissolved or dispersed in a suitable emulsion medium. Uh, just like API, we, if you use just like a protocol, it's a worldwide uh, usable uh, in this medium. Uh, the same definition of the emulsion can be put forth in the context of parental with droplet size ranging from 0.5 to 5 microns in a diameter with a stringent sterility control. So two controls are there. One is the uh, global size, another the sterility control. The definition would be same, just like a non trial But for this trial or the parental emulsion, we have to take care of these two points. So basically, these are uh, three types of emulsions available, uh, water in oil emulsions, Oil in water emulsions are there, and oil in water uh, nutrition emulsions are IV being uh, used IV intravenously. Uh, this is subcutaneously, and oil in water sustained release droplet preparation, depot preparations basically are oil in waters, uh, and these are used as a IM. So uh, quickly we will see the formulation, and then we will uh, jump to the equipment, and then in the Last, we will discuss the methodology of the manufacturing. So as far as the formulation is concerned, uh, there are some basis for the formulation. Uh, the principal objective in the formulation of the parental emulsion is to accomplishment and the maintenance of the uniform oil droplets of one to five micron in the size as the internal phase. This is a big challenge for the uh, formulation of the parental emulsion. So we have to make the, maintain the, uniform oil droplets of one to five micrometer in a size. Parental emulsions formulations are the broadly characterized as a strand preparation. It's okay. They are administered directly to the subject entering the system in circulation. You can give it uh, IV uh, and IM 
and typically providing rapid onset of action in comparison to other dosage forms. So this is the, the basically the you where we have to use these uh, parental emulsions and what are two main objectives uh, which we have to consider before formulating. Formulation components and process parameters play a critical role in the success of lipid injectable emulsions as a delivery vehicle. Hence, need to be well integrated in the formulation uh, of the development strategies. Physicochemical properties of a PI uh, significantly impact pharmacokinetic and tissue disposi dispositions. Intravenous administration of drug containing lipid emulsion needs special attention while selecting such delivery vehicles. This was the just uh, introduction of the formulation of what excipient or API we have to use. That's another thing. So before uh, uh, formulating the parental emulsion, we have to keep some few things just we uh, now discuss in the mind. Uh, for the uh, manufacturing of the parental emulsion, uh, there are basically three things. Uh, one is the aqueous space, another is the oil phase, and we need some emulsifying agent. This is the combination whole of the three things are there, aqueous phase, emulsifying agent, and the oil phase. So API, uh, uh, it depends uh, which we have to use. Uh, propofol is there, diazepam is there, vitamins are there. Uh, vehicle, uh, we have uh, two vehicles, uh, water for injection, and another is the oil, lipid vehicle is there. Uh, one emulsifying agent, and some preservatives are also required Why? because some emulsifying agents are prone to microbial growth. So some preservatives are required. Uh, I, so, uh, tonicity agents are also required but because we have to give it through IV route. So tonicity, we have to maintain it. We have to make it the isotonic solution. And in the last, some uh, pH additives. Are there. These are the ischemic diagram uh, of the emulsions. This is uh, water and this is oil. And this is oil and this is water. There's the both oil and water dispersions are there. This is the uh, tentative uh, formulation. It depends upon the API uh, and it depends upon the dose. So they need some vehicles, emulsifying agent, uh, tonicity agent, uh, antimicrobiological agent, pH adjustifiers, and emulsifying agent. Again, the vehicle would be the WFI. So soybean oil is a good vehicle. Uh, egg phospholipids play a good role in the emulsifying agent. Glycerol, uh, we make we can make the isotonic solution by using the glycerols. Disodium additate, uh, antimicrobial or sodium oleate is also emulsifying. It depends upon the formulation. Uh, it depends upon the uh, APIs, uh, which API we have to use it. So it depends. So this was all about the formulation. Uh, so what uh, are the formulation, what are the ingredients? In the last, we will also again uh, see the uh, formulation, uh, some excipients we will discuss in the last again. So equipment, uh, basically the equipment is same, uh, which we use for the sterile solution preparations. Uh, only two more equipments are necessarily required for the manufacturing of parental emulsions. So this is the same uh, list of equipments, uh, manufacturing vessels, in inline high shear mixer, uh, microfluidizer, or high pressure homogenizer. These both equipments are required necessarily for the parental emulsion manufacturing. Some suitable filtration system, uh, continuous loop in filling the vessel, uh, filling machine, a suitable size of filling machine and the autoclave for the terminal sterilization. In some formulations, we need the terminal sterilization. Mostly, P's are the terminal sterilized products. So this is the diagram of uh, one of the high speed, uh, high shear mixers. Uh, the use that can, that can pump, disperse, homogenize, and emulsify product with one and the same equipment. So this is uh, the oil and water globules are there and now we have to reduce their global size and we have to shear them and uh, mix them. So this is basically a diagramic uh, picture of the equipment. These are the water globules and this is oil globules and now they will be chopping and again the uh, approximate 100 micron uh, output uh, would be there. 
the basic uh, use of these type of the equipment is to produce a fine emulsion coarse emulsion sorry so another equipment uh, is required uh, some person use microfluidizers or high pressure homogenizers uh, can also be used uh, is a general term used uh, that describe the piece of equipment that forces the stream of liquid sample through a system that applies several forces to homogenize the sample that is to reduce the particle size of its component so basically uh, this is the equipment this is a high speed pressure homogenizer the coarse emulsion come inside and they choke them they have some pistons and some, some mechanical technical uh, mechanisms are there and this uh, reduce the uh, global size so this is in and this is out uh, they do the basic the use uh, to produce a, a good mix and a good emulsion and have a, a reduced global size the both equipments are necessarily this one inline shear mixer and that one are uh, very necessary for the manufacturing of parental emulsions in the last we will discuss a little bit methodology of the parental emulsions so we have a procedure uh, as this is the septic uh, preparation, sterile preparation, so a septic uh, tactic must always be maintained during the handling. The use of nitrogen must be there but because uh, there are chances of microbiological growth in the bulb. So antioxidant uh, and the nitrogen should be there. And especially in case where the excipient and drug are sensitive to the oxidation. This is again when but generally we have to make the manufacturing in the nitrogen atmosphere and especially for those products which are sensitive to the oxidation also. Uh, this is the same uh, manufacturing, uh, the oil phase and the water phase are the manufactured separately, uh, filtered with 0.45 micron filter. Both phases are mixed using high shear mixer, 20 by 4 emulsion. Again, this go for the microfluidization to get the fine uh, emulsion. And in the last, we will filter and uh, filling followed by the terminal sterilization. And mostly formulation, we go for the terminal sterilization. So here is the processing steps. This is the same uh, for being same used for the uh, solution preparation, cleaning of the container, dispensing of material, preparation of bulk, uh, their filtration, testing, uh, filling of the bulk into the final container and sealing of container optical inspection and labeling this one workflow would be the aqueous phase we have to manufacture aqueous phase uh, then oil phase mixing of both phases and uh, again uh, mixing or microfluidization of uh, both phases and the last filtration and filling this is the general uh, process uh, workflow so uh, some uh, components we have to check over here uh, lipid oil phase emulsifiers, aqueous phases, and, and oxidants. So soybean oil is there, sunflower oil, CCM oil, castor oil, fractionated coconut oil is there, uh, olive oil is also, fish oil is there. So, so many uh, lipid oily phases are available, uh, which are uh, very uh, feasible with your formulation can be used. And the emulsifiers, egg lecithin is a good, PEG is also there, and more matches are also available. Uh, for aqueous phase, uh, WFI would be there, and for uh, tonicity adjustment, uh, glycerol, glycine, sorbitol, oh, and xylitol, uh, so many uh, items are available. We can use it. For pH, sodium hydroxide approximate, there, these all emulsions have a eight, around 8, 8, 7.5, and 8.5 pH. Antioxidants, we may use as ascorbic acid or something else we can use these other things. Uh, this is the ischemic, uh, uh, so this is the raw material dispense over there. Uh, this is the oil phase. Then it will go for, uh, we separately we will manufacture the aqueous phase and separately we will manufacture the oil phase. Then the both phases will be mixed in inline mixers. This is the inline mixer. Then we will get the pore emulsion. Uh, the approximate uh, uh, droplet size would be 100 micron over here. Then it will again go for the microfluidizers. 
here we have to uh, make the pore, pore size of approximate two microns. And then there is the final filtration, the fling, and the terminal sterilization. Uh, another ischemic uh, diagram is here. Yeah, this one. Uh, yeah, this is the complete uh, flow diagram of the emulsion manufacturing. Uh, just this is the tank for the collection of water for injection. And this is the water phase manufacturing or case phase manufacturing. This is the filtration system over here. We have to separately filter this portion 0.45. And uh, then again, it will go to the bulk manufacturing area. This vessel is also jacketed vessel and mixing tank for oil phase. This is for the API and the soybean oil and something else purpose. Separately, we have to manufacture it. Then it, again, it will go for the 0.45 uh, micron filtration. The both phases will be uh, combined in this vessel. And this vessel is connected with inline homogenizer. This is the inline homogenizer to produce a coarse emulsion. So uh, we have to uh, give two cycles over here for the manufacturing of coarse emulsion. So this will uh, go here and here. Again, we have to give them, uh, pass them a uh, high pressure homogenizer or microfluidizer. So again, this cycle will go again this time. Approximate uh, 900 bar pressure is required over here. 900 bar pressure is required over here. So the number of cycles, it depends uh, which type of emulsion you are uh, going to manufacture over here. So these both uh, equipments are necessarily for the manufacturing of the emulsion. Then again, this uh, finalized emulsion will be filtered with 0.8 micron filter. And this will go for the storage tank for the filling. And in the filling, there is another technical aspect that as the emulsion may sediment or agglomeration may occur in the appropriate size, so there should be a loop system over here. We make it with the peristaltic pump. So just we have to keep the solution in the running form. We have to keep the emulsion in the running form. So this is the filling pumps. The machine will get the filling pump. This is the filling machine. So we have to keep, uh, we, we may use here uh, some stirrer also, but the stirrer may uh, damage the globules or it may uh, reduce the or increase the uh, globule size. So this method is a suitable one to make it a loop system and have a peristaltic pump over there and keep the uh, keep going the this loop system all the time till the filling end. Even for the storage purpose also, you have to keep this loop on. So I think this is the clear picture I can communicate with you that what is the manufacturing flow chart or ischemic flow chart for the manufacturing of the parental emulsions. So filtration arrangements, uh, it's uh, depend upon the formulation. Usually uh, oil phase are suitably filtered, can be filtered with nylon materials. Water phase can be filtered with uh, cellulose acetate and uh, 0.45 micron size is suitable for the preliminary filtration and the finalized filter uh, 0.8 filtration. And the final sterilization will be done through the terminal sterilization. This is the same uh, continuous mixing below. And already we discussed in the previous slide. So we have to keep this system over here. Uh, one thing is there, uh, there is a change in the global size after terminal sterilization. So there isn't any agglomeration issue. Global size may increase, but it will remain under the specification limit, which is not more than 5,000 per ml of two micron globules. This is the standard, uh, which is the main theme of the globule or, or the parental emulsion manufacturing. So our objective is at uh, from beginning to the end till the shelf life, we have to main this uh, specification over there. The limit is not more than 5,000 per ml of two micron globules. It may vary uh, sometimes five micron, two of the five micron or two of the three micron we can uh, uh, see over there, but it should be a uh, minimum. Uh, this is the required, not more than 5,000 per annual. 
uh, factors so are so many factors which may impact on them uh, pressure of homogenizer and several cycles in circulation in the last slide we did just discussed here the pressure and their circulations how much pressure we are going to give them and how many times we circulate these are the particles so some uh, uh, characterizations uh, are there uh, droplet size uh, zeta potential the viscosity and ph the droplet size can have a direct impact on the toxicity and stability so if we increase the droplet size more than 5 microns it may trap into the lungs and may cause the pulmonary embolism additionally in, uh, an increase in the droplet size uh, in the first addition of the formulation stability issue if there is an increase it means your the formulation is not stable zeta potential is defined as the electrical potential at the shear plane of the emulsion droplet and is useful parameter for the stability assessment same goes for the viscosity and ph we have to keep uh, stable ph maintain the ph throughout the shelf life some consideration uh, while manufacturing so uh, mono dispersed emulsion with a very small mean droplet size has been suggested to improve the physical stability of the emulsion the droplet size is also affected by the concentration of the oil phase so the concentration of oil phase is a formulation part so we have to minimum use of the oil phase generally uh, higher the oil phase greater the droplet size so the target is the 2 micron so we have to uh, use oil phase accordingly an increase in the oil phase uh, proportion would decrease the emulsifier concentration and lead to the partial or minimal interfacial surface coverage by the emulsifier uh, there are some several variables uh, which may influence on the uh, droplet size uh, type of oil and emulsifier we are using emulsifying equipment uh, on what uh, principle they are working what is the size of the equipment it depend upon the batch size also pre emulsion uh, temperature their mixing time uh, is mixer speed rate of addition of oil the addition from first phase to another phase homogenization temperature their duration and operating pressures these are the some factors uh, which may change the droplet size also which may affect the stability of the emulsion so these all parameters should be validated at the time of formulation so global size uh, basically it's the uh, same uh, not uh, should be less than 2 micron uh, size more than uh, this has the direct effect on both toxicity and stability so this is the standard so the limit for the global size is not more than 5000 per ml of 2 micron globules few uh, uh, ideally dispersed droplet are 0.5 to 1 micrometers but this is the limit So ideally, this is the 0.5 to 1 micrometers in diameter. The corresponding to the size of the yeah. few globules are greater than 3 micron. No matter, it's not a big uh, issue. Few, there are few. Uh, uh, unstable emulsions are dangerous since their storage may result in increase in the globule size due to the coalescence and may cause the thrombosis if injected. uh there is some techniques for the analysis of the droplet size or global size uh, quality control uh, definitely will check these all these things so there are for the determination of the mean droplet size of the uh, injectable emulsion either of two common light discreting technique may be employed one is the dynamic light discreting uh, known as also photon correlation spectrophotometry a spectroscopy and another based on the my scratching theory uh, known as the classical light scratching uh, i just had uh, one slide over here uh, for the suspensions so why because some persons uh, uh, have uh, some ambiguities while manufacturing the suspension and emulsion so this is only one slide for that the parental suspensions are dispersed uh, heterogeneous system containing insoluble drug particles and are uh, dosage forms containing low solubility drugs improve the solubility and stability of the drug this is the benefit of the uh, suspension have a long onset of action compared to the solutions and applicable in order to control the rate of drug absorption 
So it may be used intravenously, intramuscular, or subcutaneously. Uh, there's examples of the available suspensions are bupropen, naproxen injections, okay. zinc uh, insulin is available, uh, procaine, penicillin, and acetonitride. And uh, these are the examples for the suspensions. So the suspension is another thing. The emulsion is another thing. So in the last, we will uh, conclude the uh, whole session. Hope I get uh, clear your uh, understandings regarding the suspension. A uh, few things are there uh, that uh, what is the use of the clinical use of the parenteral emulsion. Basically, this is the delivery system of many drugs. This is uh, uh, being used as a vehicle to carry on the insoluble, fat soluble drugs. This is the delivery system. One is the use is the delivery system. Uh, another uh, delivering lipid soluble therapeutic agents, which are by, uh, definitely biocompatible uh, in nature with lipid based uh, delivery systems. In addition to solubilization and stabilization applications appropriately designed to parenteral emulsions are effective delivery system for the sustained release house. So this is the new um, area uh, which is uh, still to be uh, work is also required over there, but system release preparations in the injectable form uh, it's uh, under research or we can so it's a big market, upcoming big market that we have an opportunity that we have the uh, sustained release uh, formulation for the injectable form. Uh, another the requirement for the strict requirement for the global size and surface charge is important in the design and ultimate stability of the formulation. So basically, uh, the three types of views are there. And for the parental emulsions, uh, we have to keep eye on uh, colorable size all the time throughout the shelf life and their pH and their uh, parameters. So hopefully, uh, I can communicate well. And in the last uh, now, question and answers will be there. So you all are welcome. The house is open for the question and answers to discuss. Thank you, Akhil. And that was a comprehensive uh, presentation. Um, do we have any questions? If you could please uh, unmute and ask questions directly or post them in the chat. We have one, uh, we actually had two questions. One yeah. is from Pinky which has been answered by uh, Yusuf from Biopharma. I'm not sure if he's uh, your colleague. Um, and we have another question from Joey, which is how to determine the absorption or encapsulation rate of emulsion formulation, especially when the drug substance is a protein with low concentration, such as recombination flu vaccine with MF. 59 or ASO3 adjuvant. Good one. I hope you got that. Sorry, it's quite a long <laughs> involved question. It's a, a good question, uh, but it depends uh, totally on the formulation and uh, it depends upon specific uh, to the proteins. So uh, it, it, dep it depends case to case. Uh, we can work out on this thing. Uh, personally, he may send these questions to me. I will uh, revert back to him. Currently, I don't have any more much expertise for this special area, but he should send me the question. I will revert back. Okay, thank you. And um, so, Fam T. Miley asks, what types of filter membrane are used for emulsion filtration? Membrane substance? Question uh, mark. There are two types of uh, medium we can use. Uh, the nylon is suitable for the oil filtration and for the cellulose acetate or PES polyether sulfone, uh, these uh, mediums are very suitable for the aqueous phase, but the final filtration of 0 0.4, 0 0.8 micron, the nylon filters, cartridge filter of uh, nylon filter is suitable for that. So PES, one is the ma uh, material, another is the ce cellulose acetate for the aqueous phases and the nylon for the bulk or and for the oil phases. But it depends upon your formulation and it depends upon your API, uh, the compatibility uh, 
depends upon. Usually, we use nylon for the oil filtrations. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question. Does anyone else have a question or comment, observations? This is a good opportunity to ask uh, for uh, Akil's uh, past experience as well. And just to remind everyone that a copy of the uh, PDF of the presentation will be sent to everyone who we have emails for. We've got a couple of people who we can not identify. So if you, you know who you are, I think, because you won't have registered, please do give your email address to us. Uh, just put it in the chat so that we can actually follow up with you. Dubai asks, uh, says, uh, thank you for the wonderful and informative presentation. Thank you for that. Does anyone have any more comments or questions? Otherwise, we'll let everyone go. This is your last opportunity. Priscilla, we have your uh, email address already. Thank you. Okay, does anyone have any more questions? Otherwise, we will be letting Akil get on with the rest of his day. What time is it over there now for you? It's 3 past 15 in Karachi. Still afternoon for you. Okay, and it's early evening for us. Evening. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, um, if there are no other questions, I want to thank everybody for their attention this afternoon, evening. Um, Joey's just asked to uh, put another question in. Thanks, Joey. Because the lipid components can be degraded during storage, how to set the acceptance criteria of these degradations or oxidation? It's, uh, uh, we have two things I will discuss over here. One is the storage condition, and the uh, first one is the formulation. So formulation should be stable, and their storage condition uh, should be appropriately as required. So, so sometimes uh, these are stored in a hot condition or sometimes these are stored in a cold conditions. So the weather conditions may impact on their uh, global size and their uh, degradations are there. And there, as far as the oxidation part is concerned, it's a fault of the formulation. So aseptic conditions and the use of the nitrogen gas uh, during the manufacturing and anti use of the antioxidants, uh, just like ascorbic acid and others, uh, as per compatibility of your formulation, we have to use it. Okay, thank you for that. Um, a question that I can answer from Dr. Abdul, which is, can we get recording of this lecture? Yes, you can. Um, all you have to do is go to YouTube and search ISPE Singapore, and we have a page there where we've got all the recordings of the past Technical Tuesdays. And this will be posted up uh, in a few days' time once we're able to, to um, get everything sorted and then we can put that up there. So, so if anyone of you has missed the presentation or wants to recommend it to your colleagues, please do direct them to our YouTube page. Okay, question from Mohamed Waji. Uh, for aqueous based vaccine, is it recommended to use high shear mixers? No, it's not recommended. Uh, because for aqueous based vaccines, these are solutions, uh, uh, there are suspensions or something else. So there isn't a need to use a high shear mixers. Inline mixers are uh, sufficient for their purpose. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, any more questions? It depends on a specific formulation. Uh, if in detail he discussed with me, I can uh, uh, give them a best answer. Uh, it's uh, under the definition of aqueous vaccine. Uh, give me the uh, specific uh, which type of vaccine they are going to use. What is their viscosity or what type of the result they want to get? So we will uh, personally he may discuss with you. That's very kind of you, Akhil. Thank you. Um, if anyone of you would like to get into contact directly with Akhil, just let us know. Um, you know who we are 
Um, everyone's got our details, so we're very happy to then connect you. So unless we have any more last final questions, I'd like to thank Akil for his time this afternoon and, as always, for sharing your expertise with us. And we'd like to thank you, the audience, for joining us this afternoon and uh, wishing everyone who will be celebrating the Chinese Lunar New Year uh, a very blessed and happy new year. And uh, I think quite a lot of uh, holidays coming up uh, to celebrate in Asia. Um, and otherwise, we look forward to seeing everyone again. Um, so thank you all. Thank you, Akil. And uh, we'll be signing off for this evening. On the behalf of uh, ISP and Brooks Pharma, I also thanks to all participants and uh, especially Linda and Christina for having a so long, uh, longer relationship with me and uh, so longer time for preparing this uh, webinar over here. Thank you very much for all. And I'm open, uh, I can uh, give the answers. Uh, my email address is there. Uh, anytime, uh, and you can ask the questions. Fabulous. Thank you very much, Akhil. And it's always a pleasure to host you. Take care, everybody. Have a good evening. And to you, Akhil, have a good day. Take care. Thank all. You. Bye. Bye.